When we can become the observer of our thoughts, we go to a whole nother level. With all the opportunities that exist today, why haven't you reached your next level of income, life, and wealth? In most cases, we've been lied to. We've been told that if you find the right opportunity and you work hard, you can be successful. And that's simply not true. Millionaires, billionaires, and successful people have realized you need the foundation for wealth, the habits. And that's exactly what you'll be learning on the Millionaire Success Habits Podcast. All success starts here. Observing your thoughts, knowing what they are, knowing what emotions they cause, knowing how sometimes your thoughts take control of you. They put you in a stressful mood. They put you in a happy mood. They put you in a fearful mood. They put you in all these moods you don't realize. We let our thoughts become us. Our thoughts are things. They're not who we are. And when we can separate that, and I'm not perfect at it, but I work on it every day. When I realize there's a line between who I am as a human being and my values and the thoughts that are going on in my head. Can your thoughts lie to you? Absolutely. They lie to us all the time. How many times are you obsessively worried about something that never happened? Most of the time. We think about what could go wrong. We project a new future, a new image, of the, of, and we're stressed about this won't work, the business might not happen, I won't have the money, the relationship will end. All these thoughts and we drive ourselves crazy, the stress goes up, the anxiety goes up and it doesn't happen or it goes in a different direction. When we can become the observer of our thoughts, we go to a whole nother level. Someone asked me if you had the number one thing you could teach anybody young right now or old, starting over in business, what would be the number one thing? I mean, there's a million things. Like I've failed a lot on this journey and succeeded a lot, obviously. And I said, it just came out. I said, be the observer of your thoughts. If you think it, what's usually standing between where you are and where you want to go is the story, the thought between. I'm not smart enough, I'm too old, I'm too young, I don't have the skills, I don't have the money. It's just the thoughts that wrap in our head. We, we take a past experience and make it our present, which the past is gone. You, that, that's just research and development. Or we project a new future that's ever hap haven't even happened yet, and that's a thought we have, both of them paralyzed, you make you stressed, worry, anxious, and we stand still. And we don't even know where to go. So being the observer of your thoughts. But let me tell you how it relates to my kids, and to my daughter particularly. So. Um, we're at the breakfast table, and my son's got this crazy memory, right? So, and my daughter has got the same, um, uh, my daughter's got the same brain I do. She is um, more like, she's gonna be like the visionary inventor, and my son would be more like the CEO or COO, chief operating officer. He systems, processes, memorizes everything. She comes up with ideas that blow my mind, right? And that's, both of them are needed. Every, Walt Disney had his brother. Henry Ford had a right-hand man. Everybody, every big business has the visionary and the implementer. Right? So I have one of each. So we're sitting at the kitchen table, we're having breakfast, and my son's got these crayons, this box of like 50 crayons, and they're like these really elaborate crayons, and they're cool names like uh, French Vanilla Swirl and Hibiscus, you know, Flower, something, like big long names. So my son starts pulling them out, and I go, dude, this one smells, looks good, what is this? And he names it. And he names the next one. And we pulled out like every crayon and memorized all their names. And we were like, oh my God, that's amazing. So he got some praise. So my daughter goes, I could do that. Let me just go study him. I'm like, hey, Bree, we all have different unique abilities. That's not mine. I couldn't remember two of them. She's like, no, I could do it. So she goes and she comes in. She misses the second one. And she gets sad about it because I think Brody got all the praise. And um, anyway, and she says, she says to me, that's because you spend more time with Brody in the mornings than you do me. And man, I immediately replied. I immediately replied, and, and, and it was my thoughts, and it's probably the way I raised. I said, Bree, don't you lie to me or lie to yourself to put you in a bad mood. And she was crying. And, and that, again, my, I, I remember these because it's very rare for my daughter to have the last experience and this one. They were about a year apart. I said, tuck it in, and I... I dismissed what she was thinking and I just shut it down and I thought I did the right thing. She got dressed. First time she ever left without kissing me. She went to school. I'm like, hey, you know what? She's got to step it up. And then she left. And I sat there because I'm trying to get myself in this, this habit of observing my thoughts. And I said, what just happened? And I observed what I was thinking and what I said. And I realized I just told my daughter to ignore her feelings, that her feelings didn't mean anything. I don't care if it was right or wrong. She shouldn't have gotten upset. It's not true. I do spend equal time. But that's what she felt at the moment. And I told her to basically shut up, tuck it down, and get your ass to school. 
Now, if I think forward, if she was married to a man and she came home and she came home from work or he came home and she had something to say and she goes to tell him whether it's right or wrong, if that's the way she felt, if a man said, why don't you shut up, tuck it down and finish making my meal, I'd go over and kick his ass for treating my daughter that way. And I treated Brianna that way and it hit me. And I got this flood of emotions that I don't want her to think that she can't let her expression the way she feels. If that wasn't true, but it didn't matter. And I, I only caught that because I observed these thoughts. I literally jumped in my car. I drove 100 miles an hour to the school. I got to the school, I, little, I literally jumped the little fence. You're supposed to go through the, the principal's office, he gave a little tag. I jumped the fence, I walked to her classroom, knocked on the door, I said, Brie, can I, can I get Brie? I took her outside, I got on one knee, and I said, Brie, it doesn't matter what the truth is. I, at breakfast, I, dis I, I, I dismissed your feelings. I dismissed what, I told you to stop crying. I said, Daddy was completely wrong. I said, your feelings mean something to me and I'm sorry you felt that way. Um, if that's how you feel, then let's work on it together. And I gave her a couple compliments and I said, I'm sorry. She said, I'm sorry. We both smiled, she hugged me. I hugged her, we hugged so tight and I left like dancing. I got in my car, cranked up the music. She went back to class and felt good. If you wanna go to that next level in your job, in your career, in your new business, in your life, in your relationship, where you wanna go, you need to understand marketing, persuasion, attraction, sales. Those things are, in, they're not important. They're the lifeline. They are the oxygen of success. And the same things that allowed me to be a good dad, which I, I'm, it's my obsession to be a good dad. I'm not perfect, but I obsess on it. I read the books. I interview the, the, the people that I know that are the best parents in the world. I interview the heck out of them. People will love you, listen to you, learn from you, and buy from you when they feel understood, not when they just understand you. It's the same in your business. It's the same with your spouse. It's the same with your coworkers. It's the same with your employees. It's the same with your employer or the person above you. It's the same if you're gonna sell online, if you're gonna buy a house, if you're gonna sell a house. It's all the same. People will buy from you, learn from you, sell to you if they feel understood. What's up, what's up? Hey, before you go, you need to watch these next few videos. They're absolute game changers. Hurry up and click right over here and watch them, and I'll see you there.